Welcome to the Sandbox Show. I'm PY. And I'm Emily. I work on Firefox for Android at Mozilla. And I work at Square, where I created the open source library Leak Canary. Leak Canary is um, a library that you can add to your Android app to detect memory leaks. So today we're going to go through the Firefox for Android code and try to find and hopefully fix some leaks. And just to be clear, every single app out there has memory leaks. Uh, <laughs> it's not just Firefox. However, it's really nice that we can look at Firefox because it's open source, so we can go through that together uh, and hopefully find some leaks. So let's dive into the code. Cool. So let's add Lee Canary to the repo. We can follow the instructions on the Lee Canary website. And what was the website again? Uh, Square.github.io slash Lee Canary. OK, I think I have it up here. You all have a getting started guide up here. Yes. And so basically, it, the summary is just add debug implementation and the name of the dependency to your build.gradle. OK. So let's do that. Sounds easy enough. Is it really just this one step? Yeah, that's the magic of the canary. All right. So I'm going to start building this, and I'll push the changes so you can get them on yours. <laughs> oh, you need to do git push oh, instead okay. of just push. Yes. Uh, so if I pull, all right. Cool. So we deployed Firefox. Uh, so how do we know that Lee Canary is in? Well, there's an easy way to tell. If you go to the launcher, pressing that home button here, you will see a Lee Canary icon, and if you click on that, it should start the Lee Canary activity. So every app that uses Lee Canary gets its own. Lee Canary icon, which can be a problem when you have five or six apps using Lee Canary because then you have six Lee Canary icons. Yeah. But you can customize those. So how do you know which, which one, one is, is which? which app? You know that by going into the About oh. uh, screen. All right, so I'm going to do about. that. It's going to tell you what the name of the app is. You can see Firefox Preview here. I added that because a while ago, I had random people on the internet reach out to me saying that they were seeing bird icons on their phone because someone had shipped Lee Canary in a production app. Which leads me to, um, you should, so as you probably noticed, we use debug implementation for the dependency. That means that it only goes into the debug builds, development builds, essentially. And do not ship Lee Canary in production. Lee Canary, you know, shows a big logo and freezes the VM, and there's a whole bunch of things that you do not want to be doing in your production builds. Um, so make sure to use the debug implementation. Yes, absolutely. And that's all you got to do, paste that debug implementation uh, dependency. Um, and now we have the canary, and it is ready to um, to detect memory leaks. Cool. So how does this one line actually start to work? Detect leaks? Yeah. Yeah, that's a great question. Um, so I can get into the details. You don't have to know that as a user of the library, but it's kind of interesting if, if, you're, you know, if you're an Android developer, you're kind of curious, how does that even work, right? We just added a dependency, and all of a sudden, we're detecting memory leaks. What's going on is there's, um, I think, a class called App Watcher. I, I'm going to find it. I'll try to find it. Uh, I think I need to um, App Watcher. I pulled. I pulled. Could you try git push again? Oh, no. Git there. OK. OK, so I'm doing a sync. I just pull the changes and sync. You can see that the Canary has a class called App Watcher Installer. That class is internal. It's not part of the API. However, what's interesting about it is that it's a content provider. Have you seen content providers before? Maybe. Maybe. Yeah. They're part of the. Uh, um, they're like an Android component. You know. You know. You have activity services, broadcast receivers, and content providers. Uh, and content providers allow you to provide content, such as the list of contacts, to other apps. But in this case, we're actually not, we're creating a content provider in the Canary, but not for the purpose of exposing anything, which is just a hack to, because content providers get loaded on app start. And so it's a way for the Canary to realize that the app is starting and the content provider gets an uh, uncreate callback. And then that calls into the Lee Canary internal code, which itself will uh, install an activity lifecycle callbacks so that it knows when activities are destroyed. Uh, same, same thing for fragments, fragment views, and uh, view models as of the latest uh, release. Um, cool. So that was kind of that a, yeah, kind of <laughs> a insider knowledge. Um, 
You heard it here first. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> let's start finding some leaks. So, I mean, I'm in Leak Canary. It says no leaks. So. Okay, so let's go home. We're done. <laughs> Okay, let's actually, so a little bit before that, we, we actually went through and found a few leaks, but we didn't fix them. So we're going to go through that uh, with you and find those leaks and fix them. So let's uh, fire up Firefox. Yeah, let's open up Firefox. We'll go right into... Let's jump into it. Yeah, all right. So if we click on this three dot menu, we can open our help page. Yeah, and we need help. <laughs> So it looks like opens browser tab and then opens our support page, press back, and now we wait. Yes, now we wait. So what should we see? A little notification icon. Ah. So here it is. Yeah. What is this icon? So yeah, this is so this is uh, uh, the uh, this icon represents a bird falling, but you don't see the bird. What what happened is that originally the icon was an icon of a bird and. It looked too similar to the Twitter icon, and people complained that they thought they had a Twitter message, but instead they had a uh, leak being detected. So, uh, much less exciting, or more exciting. Yeah, I don't know which one I'd rather have. <laughs> but, um, yeah. okay, so this says we have four retained objects, and should I just tap it? It says waiting, so what does that mean? Oh, yeah, we could wait a long time here, but... Um, so essentially, let's talk a bit about what a retained object is, right? So when... Um, when an object reaches the end of its life cycle, uh, for example, an activity is destroyed or a fragment is, gets, is destroyed, we expect it to be garbage collected. Unfortunately, sometimes something keeps a reference to it and cannot be garbage collected. And that's what we call a retained object. Uh, from the canary perspective, it knows that the retained object should be garbage collected, but it doesn't know yet exactly why they haven't been garbage collected. Maybe there's a leak, maybe the garbage collector is being lazy or something. And that's... Um, the canary will, will, can uh, uh, essentially dump the heap, so copy the memory onto a file and analyze that. So why uh, is it waiting for five? Oh, uh, so what's going on here is that Android has a number of leaks that exist in the, uh, in the Android OS itself. Mm -hmm. And so the original version of the canary was dumping the heap for every potential leak. And that just meant that you were dumping the heap all the time. So now we define a buffer and we say, Let's wait, for, well, let's wait for five. Mm -hmm. But if you want to look at the leaks already, you don't have to wait. You can click. So a it. threshold that yeah. you have to hit for it to automatically dump. Absolutely. Okay, cool. So let's click on it. Tap. Let's see what happens. Oh, a bird is falling. <laughs> <laughs> so dumping memory, and then you have to click into the next. Uh, oh, as we, it's... we don't have to do anything, but it's telling us what it's doing. And it's okay, like, cool. Uh, so to found... tap for more details. Oh, wait. So it said four before, but now it says one. So... Yeah, three went away. Um, <laughs> so what really happened here is that um, when, say, you're leaking a fragment and you're leaking an activity and you're leaking a fragment view, um, but they're all going through the same pass of references, Leak Canary will take the shortest one and say, well, they're all kind of the same, so let's just focus on one. And so that's why, that's why we went from four to one here. Mm, so it's grouping similar ones together. Yes. Okay. Yes. Cool. So let's tap for more details. Cool. So here we're looking at a heap dump, and it says it found one distinct link. And you can see that it says new in here. What we do is because we're grouping leaks based on their signature, and we'll get into that a bit later, it's able to recognize if a leak is new, if the signature has been seen before or not. So let's dive into that. All right, so what let's click into our one new distinct leak. All right, what are we looking at here? <laughs> yeah, it's, a, it's an interesting screen. That I, so you might notice that the colors are very similar to the ID on the left. I basically stole all of the uh, <laughs> color theme from IntelliJ and, and reused those colors to kind of have the same spirit because fields are purple and references are in purple. But what we're looking at here is a leak trace. So it's a, it's a chain of reference. The proper term for it is the shortest reference passed from GC roots to leaking instances. And that's a Really word. rolls off the tongue. <laughs> yeah, it's really hard to say, especially for me. So I went with leak trace. I thought it's like stack yeah. trace, but for leaks. What we can see here is we have a GC root and then a bunch of objects referencing each other. And if you go down to the bottom, you okay. will see so we'll start at the, bottom. the leaking instance. All Which right. Here, so what is it? it says leaking yes coordinator layout instance. Right. So it's Leakinary is smart ish and it basically uh, analyzes the memory and is able to make deductions uh, because it knows about some of the stuff that happens in Android. So coordinator layout is a view. And here it's telling us I know this, that this view is leaking. And I think it's telling us why. Okay, so if we scroll up a bit, 
it's oh, a, could we go back to the sorry oh, what I meant by one. that is let, let's let's go and look through the when we see leak, leaking yes okay uh, leaking like, yes uh, browser fragment received on destroy view callback and references to its view should be cleared right and so this is a hint that leakinary noticed hey your fragment received on destroy view that you I expect to be garbage collected but it wasn't garbage collected and so leakinary is able to make those kind of like uh, uh, for a number of objects, it's able to decide is, is that object leaking or not. So you'll see leaking yes, leaking no. And if it doesn't know, it's, it's going to do leaking unknown. And what's interesting is to look at um, usually the problem, the memory leak, is somewhere between the leaking no and the leaking yes. And in the UI, you can see that because these are the red connections. That red line here. Yes. So it's somewhere in between. Yes, exactly. Okay. So should we work our way up a bit? Is that the best way to go yeah, about let's, it? Yeah, let's start with the, the top if we want to, and then we can kind of jump around. I like to do kind of a binary search, jumping up and All down right. on the red area. So let's start at the top of the red area. So it looks like we have leaking no, the home activity. Right, so an activity has a destroyed field, and if the activity is not destroyed, then we don't expect it to be garbage collected, so it's not leaking. So the okay. canary just decided, hey, the activity is fine. So we can keep the looking. problem is below, right? Yeah. yeah. So we keep looking down. It looks like we have some Android X stuff. So hopefully there are no bugs in Android X. It hasn't always been the case, but let's say that these days most of the Android X libraries is actually pretty safe to use. So okay. we can assume that the, the, the problem is probably further below. All right, so let's keep scrolling. Now we have some Mozilla components. So it looks like there's some sort of lifecycle bound observer that we have going on. Yeah. A default toolbar menu is registering an observer here. Default toolbar menu on item tapped, which we can look into that as well. Yeah, scroll to the bottom. So we had that view and I think right above, what's, what's right there? So yeah. it looks like the browser toolbar view has a container view. Cool, so what's a browser toolbar or toolbar view? So a browser toolbar view is the view that we show when someone is browsing that has the URL. Do you want to maybe menu. show us in the, in yeah, the emulator? Yeah, let's show us in the emulator. Um, so when you're browsing, it'd be this bottom toolbar here that we saw earlier. Nice. So this browser toolbar view, can we maybe look at the code Yeah. Uh, for it? So here's the browser toolbar view. It is and a, so it's a layout container. What's a layout container? Um, a layout container is just an interface that has a container view. Optional cool. view. So we could say that if it's a container for view, it probably has the same life cycle as the view. And so from that, we can probably deduce that if the view was expected, was leaking and expected to be garbage collected, the layout container as well, right? Yeah. Uh, so maybe let's look back at the leak trace and, and keep going up from there. Okay. All right, so looks like there's some Lambda special. Mm -hmm. How can we figure out what that is? Or do you just I, kind of skip over it? <laughs> yeah, I mean, generally when you see, uh, uh, so here we see a class name with dollars and, and weird symbols inside of it, which is uh, an anonymous class or a Lambda. Um, generally, I try to look um, either usually above to understand what's holding on to that Lambda because that'll tell me how the Lambda was defined. Um, which here would be the default toolbar menu on item tapped, right? Yeah, so, so I think that makes that? sense because on item tapped, uh, we pass into the default toolbar menu, which is the menu that we display on the browser toolbar view. So, so when we create that toolbar, it's a menu and we pass a callback for something to do when the item is tapped, right? And that, that callback is a lambda, and that's the class name, the weird class name that we were seeing a second before. Um, so the question is, what is holding on to... So I guess we, we have to ask ourselves the same question. Do we expect the default toolbar menu to be garbage collected at that point or not? Um, and I think the answer was yes. Yeah, I think the, the toolbar menu and the toolbar view should, should follow the browser fragments yeah. lifecycle. Yeah. And so that's generally the, 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 the thinking we, we apply when we look at a, at a leak. We try to think, do I, do I expect this instance to be garbage collected or not? Like, what le you know, which instances are supposed to be garbage collected together? Why is default to toolbar menu kept in memory? Um, What's right <laughs> above it in the leak trace? Yeah, it looks like we're also registering for is bookmarked updates. 
Right, so we can see that there's an inner class that's defined inside a method called register for is bookmark updates. Yeah. And nice. it looks like this registers an observer with the session, which is basically a tab okay. in the browser. And it looks like it's passing in a lifecycle owner, which cool. sounds like a good thing that we yeah. should be we should tying it to yeah. a lifecycle owner, right? So the idea is that session is an object that lives longer than this menu. And then we say, I want to observe that, that session for a duration. And the lifecycle owner defines what that duration is. Right. Cool. So this should work. It's like, well, where's the lead coming from, right? And so I guess the next question is, what is that lifecycle owner? Yeah, Where's let's that look into from? it. So let's look into, it looks like we're just passing the lifecycle owner into the default toolbar menu. Mm -hmm. So it's being passed. So let's see where we uh, define that. Uh, looks like it's being defined in browser toolbar view. And for the lifecycle owner, we're passing in container context as app compile activity. And so that's interesting because we expect a lifecycle owner, but we're passing in an activity. So my first reaction wh when I see that is, wait, is my activity a lifecycle owner? Or how does that make any sense? So if we open a uh, lifecycle owner and look at the uh, type hierarchy, we can see that there's a bunch of types that implement lifecycle owner. And one of them is uh, app compat activity, which is what our activity is. So an activity is a lifecycle owner, which makes sense. It has a lifecycle. Um, there are other types of lifecycle owners. For example, uh, fragments is a lifecycle owner, yeah. uh, which ties to lifecycle fragments. Well, I think that makes sense to look into then, because it sounds like we want this to live for a fragment lifecycle, but mm -hmm. we're passing in an activity yeah. lifecycle. And that would explain the leak. Our activity yeah. is staying around, and uh, but our fragment should be gone. So uh, we try? maybe, we, yeah, let's try fixing that. All right. I think. Right now, as it stands, we don't have access to the fragment itself in this class. So we'll probably need to add it as a param. Cool. So you're going to the constructor. Yeah, so uh, I'm going to go to the constructor, and I'm just going to define a lifecycle owner that we will pass in, because that seems safer than passing nice. in a fragment. A fragment. <laughs> that way, we can't do anything else than uh, registering it for yeah. Life cycle. All right. So instead of trying to get the context from a view and casting it as an app compat activity, let's just pass in the life cycle owner. Cool. And we'll need to make one more change. We need to pass in the life cycle owner to right. the fragments. So let's to see where we define this. Looks like in our base browser fragment. And we'll just need to add it life cycle owner, perhaps a new param. And mm. we just want to try with the fragment. So yeah. This should work. Yeah, definitely. So let's try and see if the uh, memory leak is fixed. All right, let's do it. So the way we're going to know it's fixed, we can't never be sure that a memory leak is fixed because, uh, well, uh, we can be sure it's fixed if we know exactly how to re reprodu reproduce it, which is the case here. So we're going to try that exact same, uh, following those exact same steps. And it was the only leak we were seeing. So. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. The big thing is Licanary tends to, so waits five, by default, Licanary waits five seconds before declaring that something is retained. So this, we do the action, we wait five seconds, and we're like, OK, the leak is either still there or it's gone. Let's All see. Right. So should we try the same yeah. steps and see if it happens Did we again? we fix it? All right. So we went into the menu. We clicked on Help, loaded a page, and then pressed Back. And now yeah, we wait. wait five seconds. <laughs> I think that's five seconds. Yeah. It's easier if you watch the video, you can count the time. But <laughs> for us, uh, feels like five seconds. Feels like a good five seconds. Feels like a lifetime. Okay, we fixed the leak. <laughs> nice. Perfect. Cool. Um, cool. So, so is our job here done? Or are there no more leaks? <sighs> Unfortunately, I found another one. Uh, All right. We're going to have to do that. Let's, uh, so let's navigate to a web page. All right. So we're just going to navigate to any of these tabs that we already have. Cool. Oh, no, that's a. Uh, Help page. Let's try to do a website. Yeah, okay. cool. I'll just do this. Cool. And then let's click on the shield and go to protection settings. What's protection settings? This is our tracking protection settings page. And it looks like we have another leak. <laughs> oh my god. Again. Oh, and now we have four of them. And now there's uh, four. There's four new ones. So should we tap? Yeah, let's tap. See what happens. All right. It's investigating. Oops. Analyzing. Mm-hmm. <laughs> oh, OK. So we need to talk about this. Heap analysis failed. Well, Licanary is an open source um, you know, library, and it may have bugs in it. 
uh, it looks like this might be one of those. Uh, you uh, mentioned that to me earlier, and I've had people mention that this happens sometimes, but I was never able to reproduce it. So I'm really glad that we were able to reproduce it here. Um, I'll look into that later after this yeah, video. We'll this. <laughs> uh, but in the meantime, let's just do it again. All right, we'll do it again. So let's do the same steps again. All right, open a new tab, just for, all right. Clicking on the shield, into protection settings, and wait a back. few seconds, and here we go again. So okay. it did happen again, which Let's, I guess is good. It's reproducible. Yeah, yeah. All right, click on here, dumping. And let's hope it's good. All right, here we go. Yes, found the leak. Yeah, so it cool. actually looks like it found two, but let's focus so on. Let's do, let's look at the first one. Let's yeah. do one at a time. <laughs> so here we go. This looks very similar to the first one that we fixed. So yeah, so we can see the coordinator layout is leaking again. What's going on? Let's. Uh, All right, so from what I've learned, we can kind of just scroll past the purple stuff. All the stuff. purple stuff. We are looking for red. So oh. contrary to the last one, there's much less red than there used to be. Yeah, so that should make it easier. Yeah, because here we can see there's only two references that are considered problematic. So the bug is one of these two. We don't know which one yet. OK, so it looks like either browser toolbar view container or browser fragment browser toolbar view. I think if I remember what you said earlier, the browser toolbar view itself is really just a wrapper for a view. It has mm -hmm. kind of the same life cycle. So really, the problem is right above, right? This, this browser fragment has a reference to a, the browser toolbar view. Exactly. And so this actually leads us to a sort of an interesting segue. So here, the last thing it says, leaking, yes. And then there's a whole like sentence in here. Uh, the browser fragment received on destroy view callback. Yes. So let's talk a little bit about that. There is a very common bug that exists in a lot of Android apps, where if you're using fragments and you're using the fragment backstack, um, you should be clearing out uh, references to views uh, in that fragment in the on destroy view callback. Unfortunately, until recently, that wasn't really called out well in the uh, Android samples. So it was a common mistake. So if you're curious to learn more, you can go to the Lee Canary website and go to fundamentals in the, the second tab. And here, there's a whole bunch of explanations that you should probably read if you're, if you're curious. But I, I put a link to a Stack Overflow answer. That's pretty great. It's an answer from Ian Lake from Google. He explained exactly how when you're using a fragment in a backstack, if you're tracking a reference to a view or a view binding that you've created in onCreateView, then you should set that reference to null in onDestroyView. Mm. And yeah, as soon as you do that, the leak is going to go away. So that sounds like something we should try. Yeah, let's try that. So if we go to browser toolbar view, you can see that we do have a late init var here that's mm -hmm. keeping a reference to yeah. the browser toolbar view. So we want to set that to null. Yeah. So can I just add on destroy view here? Let's do that. OK, here we go. Browser toolbar view equals null. Cool. Does that work? Mm. Mm -hmm. Because the compiler <laughs> is compiling. Oh, it's mad. Oh, uh, because it looks like browser toolbar view is a late init non nullable. Non -nullable. Yes. <laughs> Absolutely. And that's that's a cutting thing, right? Like in Kotlin, we, uh, Kotlin is pretty good about nullability, uh, but there is a way to kind of cheat where you can say, oh, this is never going to be null. Actually, I'm lying. It's going to be null at first. And then eventually, it's going to stop being null. But I promise uh, that I will never use it until it stops being null. And that's cool. It's how we can uh, set variables or set fields within uh, callbacks. But here, we really want to set it to null, right? Yeah. So we need to change the type to be, you can be null, and sometimes you're not null. So should we just make this one? Let's try. OK, so nullable? What happens when we make it nullable? Yeah. And probably remove late in it. Yeah. All right. It looks like. Let's wait for the compiler. <laughs> <laughs> it looks oh, like it's Oh, it looks like half happy. of the class yeah. starts breaking. Because now, yeah. We were treating it as yeah. a non-nullable, and now it's nullable. Yeah. So one of the ways to fix that would be to add bang bang everywhere. But that's not great. No, it doesn't uh, sound great. Yeah. Is so, there like a shortcut we could do? Yeah, there is a <laughs> uh, standard pattern that we uh, often use in Kotlin. Because what's going on here is that this uh, field is null for some amount of time and not null from some other amount of time. But the code accessing it is always doing that uh, in the time that it's safe to do. right? So what we're going to do is we're going to create a backing field that's nullable. 
uh, or a backing property that's nullable, and then we're gonna create a synthetic property that it is, appears non-nullable. And we're gonna use that synthetic property. So the standard pattern is to use uh, create a, something that's named the same but has an extra underscore at the beginning. All right, something like that? Yes, exactly. All so, right, cool. And this is nullable, and that's great. All right, but now and we then, still need a browser exactly. toolbar view. And we could also make that one private since it's gonna be inside this class. All right, so now we want a new. And it's going to be a val because it's not going to be updatable. Okay. Great. And then. And this one's not going to be nullable. Yeah. And it's going to delegate its getter to the other property. Like this? Yeah. Cool. So we have this in place. Now we might have a few. Uh, oh. oh. And of course, since uh, oh, right. it's nullable, we need to say, oh, I promise whenever I access this, I know I'm not going to. I access it at a bad time. All right, so, so hopefully the compiler will be happier now. Waiting for the compiler. <laughs> Do we have a typo in here? Mismatch. Oh, uh, oops, this is supposed to be this. Sorry. Yes. <laughs> huh. All right. It's it's a good compiler. It, yeah, you know, good it job, says, compiler. What, are we green or do we still have compiled errors? It looks like there are still a few. So yeah. val cannot be reassigned. Yeah, because we changed the field, so now we need to set the Backing field. So this is setting the backing field. Yeah. And is that it now? Mm. Oh. Oh, and, and same, same thing. here. Okay, yeah. cool. So we're going to use the backing fields for actually assigning the variable. Mm -hmm. Okay, cool. it looks like the compiler's happy. Should we try so, to run it? Yeah, hopefully we fixed the leak. All right. And it's deployed. Cool. Let's, yeah. uh, so should we check if it? Fix the leak. Yeah. All right, so we're Hopefully. gonna click into a tab, click into the shield icon, and then click on protection settings, protection settings and wait five seconds. Fingers crossed. Mm -mm. Oh, uh -oh no. no. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so what do we have going on still? Looks like we have two retained objects. Okay. Tap, so let's try it. Dumping the memory. Um, so the notification explains everything that's going on, but it's not really meant for quite understanding what's going on. Yeah. It's more as a, it's kind of a... All right, so it looks like we just piece. have one retained object that it found, so let's okay. see what it is. It's just the one leak. Okay, so from the get-go, this looks really similar to yeah. the leak we just had. Still the same object, same root, okay. Scrolling down, similar stuff. All purple stuff, we are fine. Okay, different here though, instead of the browser toolbar view, it looks like it's now upset about the browser interactor or the browser toolbar controller. So what's the, what are those things? Yeah, what's so the... those are part of our architecture dealing with like actions and dispatching things and maintaining like the state of the view. So what's like, what's the controller, what's an interactor? Yeah, uh, the interactor handles the like user actions and then the controller manages the outcome of those actions. That's nice, cool. So that's, I guess, a view model architecture mm -hmm. or some, some variants of that. Yeah. Um, cool, so here, would you say that uh, if you look at either the controller or the interactor or both, would you say that you expect them to have the same life cycle as the view or the same life cycle as the fragments? They should probably have the same life cycle as the view. Okay, cool, and we can confirm that if we look at the interactor, which is the highest level thing in here. Oh, here it is. Uh, yeah, do we, when do we create that? It looks like it is created at the same time as the browser toolbar view. Oh, cool. So it's probably a very similar issue where we yeah. need to create a back in notable field. Should we just do that? Yeah, let's do that. All right. Okay, cool. Just as a good first guess, let's try that. Mm -hmm. All right, so similar solution to here. Let's make this notable and yeah, private. private. Backing field, yeah. nullable, default cool. to null. And then let's set our val. Yeah. Val. Browser toolbar view interactor. Yeah, these are very wordy things. All right. Get. And then we need our get. And then we're going to get our backing field and double bang it. I'm really glad that you're typing because my keyboard has <laughs> key issues and we're not going to get into that. Who uh, doesn't? All right. <laughs> All right. So that seems to be okay. Um, are we sending it to null? Oh, yeah. We need to set it to null. Yeah. So we're going to do the same thing as here, right? Interactor equals null. null. Cool. Let's uh, redeploy and see. Hopefully, we have now fixed all of the issues and we're done with 
memory leaks and our job is done. <laughs> It's deployed. Let's trigger the leak yeah, again. Yeah, let's see if the interactor fixed the problem. So we're going to go into a tab, going to press on the shield, yep. going to go to protection settings, and wait five wait. seconds. Can't resist. Oh, no. Oh, it's here again. <laughs> Can't catch a break. <laughs> yeah. All right. So it looks like we still have two retained objects. I feel like these just never go away. <laughs> yeah, that's the problem with the canary. Once you start using it, it keeps. Yeah. Uh, it's very needy. All right, so let's tap to dump. Analyzing. All right, one retained object. Cool. Let's look at it. OK, uh, at least it looks different. OK, That's cool. a good sign. Media state machine. What's a media state machine? Media state machine has some observer. I think it has to do with media playing. It's a Mozilla <laughs> thing. It's, it's a Mozilla a, thing. It's yeah, on okay. Android thing. So, so. like. Yeah, if it looks like it's a real object, it's probably something that has a long-lived life cycle, not something tied to a specific page, right? So we could assume that, and it's got some observer, it's observing things, but we could assume that the media state machine has a longer life cycle. It's probably not the thing that's leaking right now. Yeah, so let's keep scrolling down a bit. These are all like Java util classes. That's probably not likely, right? Yeah, definitely. Well, there aren't, uh, usually there aren't bugs in the JDK, or not that many anyway. Um, and looking at those is kind of, a, I usually in my, in my mind replace them with like, okay, so that's a map. Like it's, I don't really care about the details of the map implementation. I can jump uh, straight to like above it or below it. Right. Yeah. Um, okay, so here's kind of interesting. We have some lifecycle observers. And if we keep scrolling down, it looks like we're dealing with the same thing oh. as leak one. <laughs> I thought we fixed that. I thought we fixed it too. <laughs> OK, that's weird. So we're back to this unidentified, and tapped, and there's this thing that's holding on to the default toolbar menu. It's surprising. So let's, let's start digging a little bit. So what is the thing that's leaking today, or in this, in this specific leak? It looks like? If you go to the bottom, it should tell us it's, it's, the, it's still the coordinator layout. coordinator the layout. And it's, but if we, sorry, I meant uh, if we look at unidentified, and tapped, uh, if oh, you go back to the, the default toolbar menu. So yeah. Previously, when we looked at this leak, it, it was in another context through another pass, but we saw that we expected the default toolbar menu to be garbage collected at, you know, at some point in time. Um, and here, uh, it gets interesting because what we can see, if you scroll up a little bit, I think there's probably a fragment in here. Is there a fragment or maybe not even a fragment? I don't see one. Oh, okay. Yeah, so we tied its life cycle, the, the default toolbar menu, to the life cycle of a fragment. We use the fragment as a life cycle owner. But as we saw in the leak that we just addressed, uh, fragments can have a different life cycle than their, their views, right? And so especially when they're added to a back stack, which is what we're triggering here, the view has a shorter life cycle. And so it looks like what ha what's happening here is that we're holding onto that default toolbar menu for the life cycle of the fragments. That's the change we made. We went from activity to fragment. But in fact, it should have an even shorter life cycle, which is the life cycle of the view. Turns out, you can get life cycle owner for the view of the fragment. Mm, that makes sense. So maybe the fix we did in the first leak was not the right fix. It was the right fix in the context of what we're dealing with, yeah. but uh, we actually did not go all the way. Should we see where we're using this now then? Yeah, let's let's look at that. So I think, what, what was the class that where we did the fix? It was in the browser toolbar view. We were passing mm -hmm. in the base browser fragment as the life cycle oh, owner. Cool. And so it turns out that, I guess, if you let your ID guide you and you ask what can i type here it's going to tell you oh view lifecycle ah. owner is another option here so what is the view lifecycle owner then it's the lifecycle owner for the view of the fragments and so okay. essentially fragments implement lifecycle owner but they also have a getter for a view lifecycle owner that where the lifecycle maps the lifecycle of their view so when you're observing something that should only live as long as the view then you should use the view lifecycle owner instead of the fragment itself as the lifecycle owner. Interesting. Cool, yeah. So should we see if it fixes it? Uh, absolutely, let's, let's try. All right, maybe third time trying to fix yeah. this, the charm. <laughs> All right, it's deployed. So we're going to check out if that fix mm -hmm. fixes it. <laughs> so same STR, we're going to click into a tab, going to click on the shield, click on protection settings, and, and we're going to wait. Is it five seconds yet? 
Still not. I'm not seeing anything. I'm feeling pretty optimistic. Yeah, <laughs> that's exciting. So we finally fixed all the leaks, it looks like. Yeah. Um, I So prior to this video, I went through Firefox and tried to find more leaks and I could not. These are the only two we found. So it's looking pretty good. I think what's interesting here too is that those two leaks are actually very common. Uh, you, will find, uh, you will find them in many, many apps. Dealing with the wrong lifecycle owner is an easy mistake and similarly, uh, forgetting to clear our view references or view binding references from undestroy view when you're using a backstack is also a very common mistake. I think Google has taken steps toward, towards documenting this more, so hopefully it's going to get better. There's a hashtag on uh, Stack Overflow that's the Leakinary hashtag where I kind of watch people asking questions, and a lot of them are related to, uh, to this fragment issue, the fragment view. Yeah, so I've just pushed up those changes, and I really want PY to contribute to <laughs> Firefox. <laughs> I don't know how to open source, so let's try and learn. Um, cool. Yeah, so I mean, you really did all the work here and then I'm gonna claim all uh, the benefits. I think we'll be like co-authors on the commit, so okay. it'll be okay. <laughs> That's fine then. Okay, so let's see. So if I pull your changes, mm -hmm. can do that. And then I can check out, but the thing is that um, if I look at, if I do a git, log, we can see that uh, there's your first commit adding the canary, the second uh, commit fix it, fixing leaks. So the first commit is something that we didn't talk about today, but uh, leak canary actually al already exists in Firefox uh, today, um, and we removed it for the purpose of this video. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a new branch where I'm going to cherry pick the fix that you did, and that branch is going to be based on master. So git checkout dash b from master and it's going to be name fix all the leaks. It's a good name. I can't do that because fix all the leaks. Uh, no, it's okay. I think it's the other way around. Git is hard. Origin slash master. Is that the way you do it? Okay. Branch fix all the leaks set up to track remote branch master from origin. Yes. That's kind of what I wanted. And then I will um, look at the commit you added which is this one, I'm going to cherry pick it. Now I can just create a branch and contribute your own fix to Mozilla. So let's see, you push this branch, then we have a custom script called git compare, which is going to open a page where I can open up a PR against. Go. So this opens a PR in, on my repo. So instead of that actually, I think what I want to do is do this. I can compare and pull request, and then it's going to open a PR against Mozilla Mobile where I uh, can say fix all the leaks. Looks great. Let me just throw a few <laughs> baby chicks in here, uh, and because it's kind of like the Lee Canary logo. And then, yeah. And don't worry, we'll have someone else review this code because. <laughs> yeah, it's, yeah. Um, we need a third pair of eyes on this. <laughs> yes. cannot, tr cannot trust myself, but I think yeah. we're pretty good. So if we look at what we did, yeah, we nailed out a few, view a few views. We used the proper lifecycle owners. To contribute to Firefox, I think there's a few more things that we need to be done, like running tests, having screenshots, explaining more about the change, which we're not doing here just to go fast. But generally, it's a pretty uh, easy process, uh, and it's really cool to be able to contribute to your own browser, I think. And if you want to go file issues on either of these projects, please come <laughs> file issues or help us fix other issues. Yeah, yeah, we absolutely love to. I think both uh, Firefox, but also on the Canary side, I, I look at all issues and try to fix things as they come up. This seems like a good place to stop. Yeah, definitely. Uh, I think we did a lot of very interesting things today. So what did we talk about? In the first leak, we talked about passing the correct lifecycle owner. To an observer. And so we had, we realized that we were passing an activity uh, lifecycle owner, and then we tried to fix it by changing to a fragment lifecycle owner, but that wasn't good enough. We needed a fragment view lifecycle owner. Yep. So we learned about that. And then in leak number two, we learned that we have to dereference some views in on destroy view of the fragment. Yeah, and that's a very common type of leak. Uh, and anytime you're using a fragment backstack, um, you need to dereference views in on destroy view. And hopefully leak canary helps uh, detect, detect those mistakes. So if you're interested in either of these open source repos, we've linked them below. And Square also has a lot of other open source libraries, especially for Android, such as 
retrofit OKHTP, feel free to check them out. We try to share them to help other engineers uh, solve their problems and make apps faster. And if you have questions about any of these things, feel free to reach out to either of us on Twitter. All right. Well, thanks a lot, Emily, for your time. Thanks for being here and thanks for watching. Thank <laughs> you.